Hallo. Goed, nou gaan we tien keer. Hoi, hoi, hoi. Hoi, hoi, hoi. Hoi, hoi, hoi. Mon akro akro hulkrup om ja. Ja. Så må det bæge her. Akkode hul om ja. Ja. Akro hulkrup og krøjelets pneumonia. Jeg har et pneumonia. Ja. Are you feeling any better, Grandma Dorothy? I had a shot of a steroid shot. And five antibiotic pills, and it cleaned it out. I'm feeling better, so much better. People oh. are dying of pneumonia. I almost bit it. Mm. You you sound good. Yeah, I feel better today. So, huh? I went clear to Florida like that. Wow. Go yeah, um, yeah. Dog type, baby. Oh. Okay. Uh, do you want me to get started? Um, just maybe if people could uh type in their name with the number of people in the household. Okay. Oh, ah, cool. All right, ah, cool. Uh, on their own, they bar bon. Uh, not any hard key. Um, not any hard key. Hanko key the door they get don't zan ma. So we're gonna talk about uh Christmas among Kiowa people today. Our title of the session or our title of this outreach is on their own they mohag ya zan. It's wonderful that it took me back to another era, and so we got a <clears throat> we got a set of spe uh, of speakers and elders that's going to bring bring us back to the memories of growing up and Christmas, you know what it meant to them, what they experienced, and also we'll get to listen to some older recordings of of our elders past talking about Christmas when they were growing up, even back earlier, and. Then we'll have discussions, and other people will be able to talk about that as well. So, um, let's see. Um, am I su supposed to talk about the schedule, or do we yeah? Okay, there we go. The agenda. Oh, a who? Okay, so the agenda we have tonight is we're having the opening prayer, which we're gonna do right after this. Yeah, um, welcome and greeting participants. Christmas hymns. Then we'll have a same day story since it's, it's at the culturally appropriate time. Uh, Kiowa culture, uh, we'll talk to, we'll listen to Kiowa culture program uh, recordings, uh, Christmas vocabulary, we'll go over that. Then we'll have an uh, audience scavenger hunt. Then we'll do the Christmas stories and memories from the elder mentors. And then audience, audience will share their Christmas stories. And then we will go into the closing prayer. So, um, uh, so I will go ahead and turn this over to Miss Marion Hansen for the opening prayer. Be uh, Tsai. Yeah. Um. Okay. Oh, toy I call spotted wings. Boy, call yonder. Oh, they dog eat. Mom, on day, ain't so it's on. Pay your dog. Pay your dog, you eat dog. Ain't they key? Eat all your tally eat dog. He, he died, yeah, son, they are. Talk or get more hate. Hang got key da, yeah, a quite cool. Tongue got dog e, tally dog, e boggy tally shan don't tie, son, dog, dog e tally dog. 
Dum tai bello dog e tali hang got son. Dog e dot tau a koi get more hang ain't it? Tonga koi goo get high get dog at gong dong key dog high get dog. Honda get tie get. They don't tie at gong ball. Dog at e. Dog key bong tan. Dog tie dog e ain't dog. Dog dog tie. Dog tie dog. I'm dog yeah yes yeah dog. Go get gong ball go they go a dog. Dog call it tan. Ain't it key. Go it, no, go don't get. Eight more, eight more. Hey, go, go it, don't get. Go, go it, hold up, get oi. I get so bad, no, hey. Oi, but oi, get up. Oi, don't get, get peak, get up. Ain't hold the key, they hold it. Go go eight or quite good more hey more. It's important. I get hey more. I don't get get all day. They they go go. Dog told day. Dog e the more key and dog. They hunt day. Not hide your dog. Dog side below. They hunt day. Get out of here, only dog. Goi gu ga te gi gu do, no tai do, am pe lo. Te hon de, get out of here, only dog. He ga, e go te only dog. Da ki ya, ha hong de, yan hong. Oba hong. Amen. Oba hong. Aho. So maybe if we could, everybody could introduce themselves. Dane, I think you're up next and you're muted. Okay. Um, I think I already did my part. <laughs> I think I did it out of order. Um, So do we all, maybe we could uh, uh, all introduce ourselves if you want to just see who's on the screen and call on us and we'll introduce okay. ourselves and our family. Yeah, I'll start the introduction. So, uh, so um, my Kiowa name is uh, which is Kiowa language teaching man. And that name was given to me a little bit over 10 years ago by the late Steve Littleman. And that is after he found out I didn't have a Kiowa name yet. So he decided to come the next week and give me a Kiowa name. So he did. So that's how I received this name at the Jacobson House up in Norman. And so I've been by that name ever since. Cricket Roads, Connie Wardy, I'll call. Hank, them all, Goy, call. Rhodes, Guy Henry. Um, hi, um, my name is Cricket Rose Connie Wordy, and my Kiowa name is Hank Thay Ma, which is Storyteller Woman, and I uh, guess I should take this off while I'm talking, and Grandma Dorothy gave me my name because I've been doing storytelling since 1988, and um with a group of people that were young people in Tulsa that were doing stories. And I started, I started doing that there. And um, uh, 
on my Kiowa side, I am a Keybone. On my Caddo side, I'm a Henry. On my dad's side, my white side, it's a white Rhodes. So Rhodes is from my dad's side. So anyway, they own, they bought son. It's good to, they own, they bought bone. It's good to see you all. Obaha. Oh. Gom Gidog Yama Akoi, huh? Melody Redbird Post dot com. Um just wanted to say they own de bat san, han de own de ba bon to everyone. So glad everyone's here with us today. We're looking forward to sharing uh with each other and hearing um memories. So really excited to see everyone. Um I think I see Thabi next. Thabi Akoi Khan. Courtney Sotayar Holer Akon. Morga Akil. Dabin is my Kiowa name, and I was given it by my grandpa Sherwood Sotai. Uh, and I'm from Moore. My family's uh, Sotai Ga Kodasit, Dape Go Neda. Uh, my family's are Kodasits and Sotais. They own the Babon. They own the Batsan. Obaha. And I'll pass it on to uh, Tonkine. Oh. Uh, Nelson Sato, a uh, Kong. Tonkine, a Koi Kong. Saying Tonki go, Zep Koyete, Tape Cop, Ne Da. On day on day, but son. Uh, my name is Nelson Satok. Uh, uh, my Kiowa name is uh, Scissor Tail. It's given to me by my late grandpa Nelson Big Bo. Um, I'm glad you all can be here and join us tonight. Uh, thank y'all very much. Uh, Hank, I bought I get over all. I'm gonna pass it on to somebody. Oh, hotel, hotel. I call. Um, hey, Kima. Oh, I didn't see you. Okay, hey, Kima. <laughs> Oh, I think you're muted. They own the babon. Hey, Kima, go ahead, come. No, the Julia Noah Woodard, a con. And um, go ahead, tongue. Go. Toy body, ah, the cockup, the low papai, all good. Oh, they go, they do. My Kiwi name is uh, A Kima, and uh, good to see all of you. And it was given to me by my, one of my paternal great-grandmothers, <laughs> Lily Coiton Nawuxi. Candy. And it was her name, Akima. It, I've been uh, told by several uh, family member elders that it, it could be translated as, it's okay as roses or plums that are blossoming in the process of blossoming. A. And so, uh, I'm gonna pass it on over to uh, 
the George. <laughs> Just introduce ourselves. <laughs> Hello, um, uh -huh. George Woodard, uh, Kong. <laughs> and uh, my name is George Woodard. Um, Ong Ato Tsang, uh, Goy Kong. Uh, my Kaiwa name is He Came Home on His Own. And uh, Anadarko, yeah, yeah. I grew up here in Anadarko, and, and uh, I received my my Kiowa name from my my late aunt um, Martha Perez, and uh, she gave that to me. And uh, there's a story that goes along with it, but it's it's how I just came home came home on my own, and it's a uh, it means it means a lot to me because I I didn't always live here in Oklahoma. I grew up half my life in Minnesota, and when I came home, it was something that she she uh, was very proud of that I came home and um, started to learn my my Kiowa ways. Um, but that's that's who I am, Oba. <laughs> oh, yeah. I want to pass it on. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kenny. Kenny Allen. Can you hear me? Oh. I'm Kenny Harrigera and I live in Carnegie. My grandfather is Louis Toibo. My grandmother was Richinda Seda Peta Toibo. I'm Oto and Kiowa, and I enjoy being here. It's good to hear from all of you. Obaha. My Kiowa name is Da Oiki. It would belong to my great great grandfather, Ode Bohong. Aho. Aho. Pass it on to someone. Okay, I'll pass it on to. Is Kathy Dickerson with us? Paul. Okay. Kathy. Maybe she stepped off for a second. You know, pass it to someone else. Uh, yeah, I'll pass it on to Dorothy. Dorothy, and I get my accord, huh? John Eagleheart, same bit, and come nineteen thirty three. Matana do oh yeah. Saint Pitokia I come do tiger and ma. It means that they pray uh, she comes with good prayers. Thankful for that name and I'm I'm proud of the caliber of the man, the Kiowa man who named me. They said he was in full white buckskin when he married me, when he named me. Also blessed our marriage. He he was a good, strong peyote man from Cedardale, from that area, from what I heard of him. And I'm proud of my name. I'm proud of everything pertaining to how Kiowa I am. One day only day, but but things on get good a title. So get don't hide your dog. One day I get the no. Go my up in go a Kaleido. Bake gum. I got the a go fade. I got the bait high yet though. Oh, you're the fado. What I'm saying is we taught them and 
Estiloris. Arigera. Smarthanel Puda. Belmer Ruth Silverhorn Eisenberger. And many, many others. And if they had not learned, they would not be in the position they're in right now. So please try to work with these people. They're already certified and they speak the Kiowa thanks to Dane, Dane Pula, or our instructor. I just wanted to put that in as a side. Congratulate them when you see them. I think they're doing a wonderful job, all of them. And we stand behind our certifying them 100%. I hope. Oh, uh, hold it. Who's next? Go ahead, Miss Gail. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Oh, oh. okay. Oh. Um, Gail Toybock, huh? Charles got the toybo, not dull, uh, not dull, dull. Alice Paddlety, uh, not dull, dull. Um, Alexandria, Virginia, at Gil. They are they bought some. Oh. Oh. So, who do you want to go next? Uh, I don't, um, can you pick someone? Because I can't see who's there. I don't see names. Linda, are you on Linda? She may have popped off. She may have popped off. Joseph? Joseph, you're up. If you, yeah, there you go. Oh, and are we doing introductions? So, oh. uh, hello everyone. My name is Joseph Granado. Uh, my mother is Jeannie Granado. Uh, my grandmother is the late uh, Vernola Hantaw Pruitt, um, and I come from uh, Maddie Dogamal and uh, Joseph Taff Hantaw. I uh hope. -huh. Uh, somebody named LG Stylo. I don't know if they have their sound hooked up, Cricket. Okay. Um, Connie? Hello, everybody. Um, Hande Onde Batsan, Hong Kong Gima Aka, and Adarka Akito. Good evening, everybody. My Kaiwa name was given to me by the late Gus Palmer at Indian, Indian City, named after my mom, who held the title as one of the Ade Matans. Uh, yeah. So I uh, just want to say good evening. Thank you all for everything. I'll pass it on to Cherokee. Here. Cherokee bread, a car, that was a whole lot of time, a goy car. Um, when I dark go, uh, Obaha, thank you. And I can't see names either. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, huh? That was good. Uh, Kutonghi Tali. Oh. On day. Introductions. Introductions. Oh. <clears throat> 
Kutohin Talia Akoe Kon, a Ramon Akon Koik Iado Sapahoodle Go Ene Do Go Dok Egomoy Gamosa Adl Go Hain Ta Tape Goat Ne Do Oboha Uh, my my name's Ramon. Uh, Eagle Boy is my Kiowa name. I come from the Sepuhudo Tanado, Dog of Mo, uh, Haintaw, uh, families. Um, Melanie. Ah, uh, Melanie. I come from the, uh, my dad was Glenn Peters, Glenn Sonny Peters, uh, his mother, Emma Smokey, was uh, Begayon till now. And uh, she was uh, aunt to Florabelle Shrock, Aunt Florabelle. And uh, she was married to Glenn Peters. And then uh, her mother was Maggie Akoy, and her father was Enoch Smokey, and so I'm part of the Smokey Apitone family, Red Otter Clan, born in Fort Worth, and I live in Minnesota. Oh. Oh. Um, who else do we have? Uh, Miss Pula? I don't know if she heard. Maria, are you there? Oh, wait. No, she's not on. Alisanne's on. Okay, Alisanne. On day, on day, but son. Um, <clears throat> Alice and McClellan, a con. Can't they? A goy con. Norman Gia Akil. Um, Kale. Tega, Kalega, um, Chaneka, Kokon Gop Neda. Um, hi, my name is Alice Ann Kalati McClellan. Um, <clears throat> my Indian name is um Kiate, and it was given to me by my Oppi, my big sister, um, Alice Chanek Kokon. Um, when I was a teenager and, uh, it, I was always told it meant, um, shield or protection, but I, um, asked Dane uh, last week if he could help break it down for me. And it means the materials like, um, it's a battle name, uh, that make like the breastworks or something that helps protect you when you go to war. And, um, so that's where I get my name from. And I come from um, the Kalati, Chinate, Kokom, um, Kale families. And uh, it's really good to be on here and see all of you. Um, Ahu, Obaha. Oh. Uh, how about Clark? Oh. Uh, Clark Gallagher, uh, Khan. Uh, Norman, Oklahoma, Gaya Kido. Latin, Oklahoma, Gaya Totsan. Little Axe, Oklahoma, Gaya Kia. Baba Ha. Aho. Let's see. Who have we missed? Did Kathy do it? Or is she still on? Yeah, I'm on for, for a minute. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. I'm cool. On day, on day, but son. Uh, Catherine Dickerson, I call. Uh, top of my, a goy con. Uh, St. Louis, got a uh, Stecker, Fort Cobb, Carnegie, got 
IKEA, uh, Bacon College. I forget what we say about that. Yeah, uh, Gupta, um, Hangu, Silverhorn, Gya, Sait Soy, De, uh, Stumbling Bear, Go, Tokyo Maga, Thape Goat, Neda, Obaha. Oh. Anybody else that uh, is on that would like to introduce themselves that we may have missed? Grand uh, Miss Harrigera, are you on? Yeah. The Lord's Harrigera, a dog. Pio Gemma, a Gorkon. They own the baton. They own the bubble. But oh yeah. And I would like to pass this on to Scott Langston. Oh, Scott Langston, Akon. I'm from Texas. I'm here in Norman visiting with Mrs. Harrigera and Kenny and Gary and Carolyn. And uh, very happy to be here. Oh, <laughs> Walking in the spider oh, oh. Anybody else that we missed that wasn't able to? You've got Velma Ruth and you've got Martha. Velma is on. Where is she? Douglas. And Miss Pula. Where's Velma? I don't see her. Oh, there's So Tie House. Would y'all like to introduce yourselves? I can go ahead and introduce myself. All right, so huh? Angel and Connie Wordy, Akon, Zoltsama, Agoy Kong, uh, University of Oklahoma, uh, Agoop Banma, Ga. Uh, Connie Wordy Ga Quitone Ga Kivon Ga Henry Dape Gope Nada uh, Norman Ga Akiro Norman Ga Akia uh, Oh 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 um, Gigi Who is that Judy Miss Melanie, if you want to mute yourself, you can until it's time. I can what? Mute myself? Okay, that would be good. I think Gigi is. Oh, Gigi. I'm on. I'm on. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Oh, so sorry. Hard. Sorry. Let me get this. It's we see you. Okay. We hear you. Judith. Okay. okay. Judith, Judith Hunter, I'll come. Um, Hunter, Gya, Taylor, Hosipta, Dapeko, Nada, Anadarko, Akito. Um, Mate Ma, 45. I'm retired teacher and um, very interested in our Khoi language. And I'm really um, trying to put some work in to our language because my mother <clears throat> was Koigu. She's she didn't talk because of the boarding school and everything. And she started talking quite a bit before we lost her. Probably the last three years she started talking more and more. And I got to spend a lot of time with her. So this is something that um I'm very interested in and I really want to see this going forward into the future for our children and our grandkids and great grandkids. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh. Max the only baton or the only babon Max Yamani Akon Oklahoma City Gil University of Oklahoma Gasate Doh Gai Pan Doku Lado 
go go bear dog. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, Yamani Cope dog go go Ogawa. All it'll date go nay dog. Obaha Yantuzan ma. Aho. I think, uh, Miss Pula, are you on now? I don't see Velma. Oh, good. Come on. Yes, I'm on here now. <laughs> that was a while ago. All right. So, uh, okay. Uh, Martha, may I call a Pula? I call. Oh, good. Come on. I call it. Um, Carnegie, yeah. I The Norman, yeah. I kill. Uh, University of Oklahoma get get salt they thought uh get um let's see Omaha that's good <laughs> uh -ho. oh yeah is there anyone else that would like to introduce themselves we're gonna pull up the slides again here in a second All right, and if you haven't already, uh, feel free to uh, say hello in the chat. Um, we would like to know if you have anyone else uh, watching the outreach and attending with you. Um, so if you don't mind, thank you for those of you who have already said hello in the chat. Um, just uh, if you could share your name and then how many people are watching with you. Uh -ho. All right, let's uh, go ahead and pull up the slides and go back to our next agenda item here. All right, so next, uh, can everyone see my screen first off? Oh. Oh. Okay, so we have um, some Kiowa Christmas songs that we wanted to share with everyone tonight. Um, so here's the full list of all the songs we're going to um, hear tonight and um, we will have the words on the screen and um, we will have the, um, this PowerPoint can be available um, via email afterwards. So if you would like to be added to the email list um, for a copy of these slides afterwards, if you don't mind just putting your email address in the chat. Um, if you got an email reminder, then, you know, hopefully you're already on a list and we'll send, send these out to you. But uh, if we don't have you on the list, just put uh, put your email in the chat. We'll get you a copy of the slides. Um, also, this outreach recording will be posted on YouTube as well. So, uh, okay. So we're going to go ahead and start with our first couple uh, Kiowa Christmas songs here. So first off, I'm going to turn it over to Guthomi Tali to uh, introduce the song. From his class. Oh, uh, so I teach at the Carnegie High School, uh, Carnegie, yeah, Carnegie, Oklahoma. Um, and we have about 18 students uh, in my class. Most are, um, what's well, about mixed, but about half half of it's Kiowa, and most of the school population here is Kiowa as well. And then and there's uh, some Hong Kiago, I believe, uh, um, off tribes, but and non Indians as well. But it's a great uh, group of kids. They're pretty respectful. Uh, I appreciate them a lot. It's the first class of its kind in Carnegie. Um, and I understand there was also a Native American study program back in the 70s, but uh, so we've been working on Cody Bo's hymn, and this is the first Kiowa hymn that was composed in 1893 uh, by, <clears throat> I guess, missionary Marriott Reeside wanted the Kiowas to sing their own language, and she spoke to Gothe uh, Bon, I believe is how it's pronounced. Um, or Cody Bow, uh, the Anglican name. And she talked to him about uh, Jesus is coming, the time of Christmas and carols. And she asked him to compose one. And uh, 
Um, so this is what he came up with. And we actually recorded this today. So they've been sounding pretty well. And, and I think they sound pretty good, but maybe I'm partial overall. On day dog, I'll keep on safe. On day dog, I'll keep on safe. Jesus, a day dog, I'll keep on safe. Jesus, a day hondo safe. They kept on, but keep on safe. Jesus, a day hondo safe. Beg ya don't ya keep on safe. On day dog, I'll keep on safe. On day dog, I'll keep on safe. Jesus, I day dog, I'll keep on safe. Jesus, I day on the safe. Beg ya don't ya keep on safe. Jesus, I day on the safe. Beg ya don't ya keep on safe. On day dog, I keep on safe. On day dog, I keep on safe. Jesus, I day dog, I keep on safe. Jesus, I day on the safe. Beg ya don't ya keep on safe. Jesus on the hundred feet. Beg ya don't ya keep on safe. On day dog ya keep on safe. On day dog ya keep on safe. Jesus on the dog ya keep on safe. Jesus on the hundred feet. Who's singing? So oh, huh? oh, that was good. Said, who's singing? It's uh, me and my class. Who's going here and tell you, Ramon? Put their name down by it. That that class, yeah, they did good. That was good. Explain the words. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, the <clears throat> the meaning comes. Uh, who came down to save? Uh. Or what was it that came down to save? And uh, it's repeated twice. It says, it was Jesus that came down to save. Why did Jesus come down to save? For all, for all mankind, for all of us, he came to save us. Why did Jesus come down to save? Uh, and our souls or in our, in our minds will be saved. In, in this way of talking, you would say, Honde Da, they're saying, what is that that came? It's, that's how dense they were about learning when they first heard a English church song explained. Honde Da, you would have said, Ha Da. Oh. Da. Just a thought. Honde Da. I on to time. <clears throat> ha. All right. So the next song. Hey, Kim, right. over to you. If you, would you like to share anything before we pl press uh, record? Or press play on. Ha. Oh. Um, I uh, am teaching the Anadarko High School class, classes. I have 61 students. 
uh, three non-Indians and 58 Kiowas. So I think that's pretty wonderful that they're all interested in taking the class. But we all, we've been singing Silent Night in our high school class and we perform today at the Kiowa Elders Lunch as a practice before we perform tomorrow at the uh, Christmas Elder Lunch. And so it was turned out really, really good. I was so pleased and thankful. And so we've been learning Silent Night. Been learning uh, numerous other songs and Christmas songs. But the Silent Night that I have for tonight, uh, George and I, um, it's the song that uh, we chose or we were asked to share uh, that we have learned in our Kiowa community class in Anadarko. And so um, there's a handful of us that attend regularly. And so we recorded it um, uh, several uh, evenings ago and uh, it's been going wonderfully in that class with with trying to uh, implement learning a new hymn every class uh, and we we are focusing on not just singing the song and memorizing it but we are talking about it we're talking our way through it is what we say we walk through it so we dissect the song line by line and talk about its translations and that's our that's our goal in all of my classes that I teach yeah. um so anyway that's what we're doing so uh again the silent night was uh, uh composed in uh 1993 by uh Mrs. Alicia Kibone Gonzalez's Kiowa language class and the beautiful thing about it is that um a couple of the students that I have in the class now are the children of some of those people that were in that class that composed that song. So it's made and it makes me so thankful and that, that I think that tells a lot about our Kiowa, um, our love for our language, how we're all doing, trying our best to do our part. Um, so anyway, um, I did want to add too that today at the Kiowa Elder Center, uh, Mr. Yego Timothy took his uh, class and they performed Silent Night, but they did the other version of Silent Night. And I thought that was really interesting and it was neat for the people and, and the students to support each other in that way and just give a variety. So, uh, uh, without further ado, <laughs> uh, it's a uh, Gagin Dome. Uh, it was night. Gadok Gadome. It was a holy night or godly night. Dok Ae Tong San Hail. The Son of God was born. Gaboli Tato Ga. A bon uh, the angels or the shepherds saw a star. Soul saw a dog calm hail. The angels were sing calling, calling or call singing, sing calling. Dog at e ba ki bon son. The son of God came to save us all or came to save, came to save, uh, dog at e ki bon son, uh, the son of God came to save, uh, let's see, I think that was, I'm doing this without looking at it, so, uh, anyway, hey, you want to add anything? Okay, so, uh, that's all, ba ha, ki ba ki bon son. Uh -huh. For you, he came to save. 
Dog ai baki son, the son of God for you he came to save. There we go. I had to think about how the lines went. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, cool. I'll go ahead and press play. Come on. Hurry. Hurry. Hold it. Thank you for reminding me about signing. November 27, 2023, Anadarko Community Kiowa Language Class singing Silent Night. Kegi Dome, Gadoke Dome. enjoying this. All right. I think Miss Melody's class is up next. Come get your dog. Yeah. Ma. That one. Oh. What that was awesome. <laughs> Louis, Louis Toibo's song with the same subject. With oh. the words. Sing it. Uh, oh, yeah, Grandma, we have that on the um, agenda. I believe Tonkine is going to sing that for us uh, in a little bit. Because you got Kaiwa words and a Kaiwa tune there. Uh, oh. Awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> so <clears throat> um, this uh, next song is uh, Joy to the World, composed by um, Harry Dombo. And this is uh, the class that I teach, the Kiowa language class at Weatherford High School. Um, there is a picture of them. Um, we have um, four Kiowas and um, several uh, Cheyenne and Arapaho uh, tribal members, and then um, you know several non non native students. So it's really exciting. This is the first year ever that Weatherford High School is offering a Native American language class and. So we're really excited and they have just been doing some amazing work, learning and 
digging into the language and we're really excited to share this song with everyone. So I'll go ahead and press play. Anko. Nice. <laughs> yeah, they had fun. Um, let's see here. All right, for the next part, I'll turn it over to Hank Demo. All, All right. right. Oh, well, um, originally when we were thinking about this, it was just a winter uh, outreach. So um, we wanted to do some same day stuff, but uh, it turned into just being my one story, <laughs> but, um, but same time of year. So, um, uh, we know that there are rules that need to be followed, um, when we tell same day stories and this one's a good story. It's just a, a short story, um, about how we came here on this earth. So just to kind of hear Kiowa in the storytelling method. Um, so, I guess you'll have to change the screen for me. Go and get dog, Yama. All right. So, uh, Guida. All right. Saying they can't he dome. Saying they are hearing ya on your God on day. Na hi get get tons on a. Saying that Koegu and Kudal Hedo. My son Hande Dome got on ma de got I hail da. All right. E guy hail. Got Koegu Han a tape da hail. They go a good soul, hog ya taints o arm ya. Haim thong ye. So, you know, we start out with saying they was coming along, or he was, uh, this one, he was tired, he was lonely. And, um, and we always tell him in the evening and in the winter time when he's up in the sky watching over us. So, Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. Aho, Obaha. Aho. Oh. All right. Uh, for the next part, I'll turn it over to Da Bing. Aho. Melody, if you'll give me just a minute i think we wanted to do the um the okay sorry <clears throat> okay um i'm going to share a little bit about our churches before we listen to the a recording from the kiowa culture program and this slide, you could see um, a screenshot of some of the first churches, Kiowa churches. We have Angu Ah, Elk Creek, Saint Yadalda, Rainy Mountain, 
talk. Oh, Saddle Mountain. Ah, uh, Cedar Creek. Bowtone. Oak Edel. Mountain Scott. Oh, Goodle. Redstone. Methven. And Dain Da Yi Ga for the St. Patrick's Catholic Church. So uh, these are some of the first Kiowa Mission churches. And the next slide shows us the uh, Kiowa churches today. And I know that tonight we'll get to hear all of um, our elders that are with us and families that are with us, our Christmas memories. And from what I have, uh, I, what I wanted to share with this is, uh, you know, all of our families today in our line of relatives, we have a connection to these Kiowa churches and we each have our stories and our memories and our churches, they have um, evolved and grown just like we have as Kiowa people. And um, I was kind of doing some reading and it, about some of the from some of the missionary reports and then all we've been listening to. And we've talked about this and um, shared our, our memories with each other over time. Uh, and these churches, the way they came about through uh, missionaries at, attempts to convert our Kiowa people's faith. It comes from um, hardships uh, and it at times I'm sure it tested our Kiowa people, but our Kiowa people, they uh, remain steadfast in their faith and spirituality um, and close to our creator, just like we always have been. And I think about that whenever we hear the uh, first hymn of Go to Bo and that beautiful song that was composed then. And um, our, our people uh, knew that, knew Dong um, Oyom Dok E, the creator of all things. And um, just during this holiday season, I think about our Kiowa people and that that's it's been tough on families um but to remember that we're kiowas and we're strong and we're resilient and generous and kind and loving and praying people and we see that exam example through our churches and the um, traditions that were uh carried on um centuries ago and that's how it's uh, always been and it's how it will always be if we continue to uh to learn our language and carry on our stories and our memories close to our heart and continue to making more and uh I just wanted to share that and then show uh share these uh churches that are still active today in our communities and very appreciative of all that they do um some of what I know about is, you know, our people, they pray all year for God's blessings for, and they make these uh, pledges to, to be able to provide for their families and provide for others and guests and visitors and fill lots of candy bags. Um, and even though our congregations may be small throughout the year, uh, they, the the showing of our people on those our families during those nights to be able to have those reunions together and share that time together is really something special and uh to be treasured and takes us back just like our uh title of this outreach and i think now we're going to listen to a uh recording from the Kiowa culture program to to be able to hear some of those memories from, from that time. Oh, aho. 
Okay, so with that, um, I wanted to first uh, in, to kind of uh, share with us a little bit before we listen to the recording. I wanted to bring up Piho uh, Yama Grandma D, and she's going to share with us um, some important points about our Kiowa Christmases long ago and how Kiowa Christmases got started. Uh, well, the Christmas, first Christmas was, <clears throat> first the Kiowas were converted by the work of the mission missionaries who came, left their homes and came to tell the story of Jesus and his love for each of us. And so uh, the first Christmas was in 1893 with the people from the Rainy Mountain area. They were the ones who were converted in January, somewhere along. I know missionaries came to the camps of the people that were gathered at Anadarko for the agency to receive their rations as uh, prescribed or written in the treaties. And so there was a huge camp there of Kiowas and the three tribes, the ones who signed the Medicine Lodge Treaty. And that's when and they gathered there and had their activities, whatever went on. And the missionaries were there also. And so they, these, the group of people from the Rainy Mountain were converted and baptized January 22nd, 1893. And that December was their first Christmas. And in order to uh, provide gifts for these Kiowa people, Kiowa members, uh, the missionaries wrote and asked their churches. And so from back east, uh, eastern of U.S., a the barrel of gifts were shipped in barrels. Uh, see missionary accounts where they came to Chickasha, which was the closest uh, railroad station from Rainy Mountain and on west. And so uh, that's how uh, they received their gifts to give out at Christmas, because you know the Kiowas knew nothing about gifts the first Christmas they gathered and so that's when they they uh, received these toys and other and the adults got gifts too but the thing that the car was I suppose remembered was the toys that came and and so uh that's why they called it uh Hank Okida Hank as Hank E and Hank as uh, toys and so they're saying they're designating that day that that's when they gave away the, gave away the toys that, that's the name that they Hank Okita that's what that means and that's where it came from and that's what I wanted to explain and uh, Isabel describes if it's Isabel that we're listening to she describes the dolls and other things so. Oh, oh, ah, who, Grandma? Okay, ah, co. We'll pull up the recording here. Okay, she's right after this speaker here. Okay, here she is. Oh. Hey, go and get baton, get it. Now go, yeah, I get it. Go, I'm not still. I'm good. So go, go, party, answer, party. But all, all, and so go, yeah, get all, all, and go, so, yeah, answer, then I go. Tay 
from that church. It's, it was called Elk Creek at the time. I think today it's called First American. But this time it was out in the country. And and I, I wish and I hope I do some justice to her description and her of uh, life in this, these camps around the church. And she said everybody came even though and camped. And she said if there was snow on the ground, then they removed the snow and put up their camp. And she said uh, families camped in the same places. And she said on the to the east where the sun comes up, Lone Wolf and his families, his relatives camp to the east, I guess, and then a church and to the west where the door toads. And so she was naming people, and, and they camped at the same spot every year. And uh, like I say, she said so much. She always says a lot when she talks. But she described the, the camp and how they enjoyed it and how they, uh, what they ate. They would butcher beefs, and they would cook that. And then uh, they... She talked about uh, the Christmas inside the tree. And then she talked about the toys. And she said uh, the dolls were, weren't real. The only thing, real thing about them was their face. And then other parts were stuffed. They, they weren't really real, but uh, they were. She said, saw me. So anyway, she said that's where the dolls were. And so, and you find out what saw me is. I don't have time to describe it, but anyway, the, uh, they enjoyed it. They enjoyed getting the toys. She described those. And she did describe camp life. She talked about their camp. She said their camp had a, her, her parents had a, 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 something like a phonograph, I guess, I think she called it a uh, Edison. So anyway, that was in her camp, and she talked about how every how how happy everyone was, what a good time they had in their camps. And uh, I'm sure I'm leaving so much out, but I'm trying to tell you what she's telling. She said today it's not like that. Today that isn't the way that. She remembers as a child. So those are happy times for her and for everyone, it sounds like, together. Over her. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Go back. <laughs> she talked about the tree and the gifts on the tree were not right. They were, there, there were no decorations like you see on a Christmas tree today, not one single decoration, just the tree. And then the gifts were tied to the tree. And she said they were, uh, that that added to the tree and she described the gifts. There would be shawls, or blankets and toys and, and ri uh, ribbons for the hair. And, uh, and then, uh, that was and nothing was wrapped. You have to remember in those days anyway, they didn't go to town that much, so there was no gift wrapping. They were just hung the way they were. So she said, nowadays they're all wrapped up in box and you don't know what and you don't know what's in there. So the other way you could see what everybody was getting. <laughs> Overhaul. Oh, uh who? Oh, awesome. All right. Well, with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, move us to our next um, activity here. Uh, we have a Christmas game. So I'll turn this over to Da Bing and King Ate. Oh, okay. We're going to... Play games. So if you have children with you and your families, then this is for them. This will be fun, but uh, it's a scavenger hunt. 
and you have to find some items. So this is a game and they said to bring any kids with us. And I will be leading this and we're going to go over some of these words. So everybody tune in and uh, look at the screen. Um, you're going to, uh, we're going to go over these. So ain't day but on ain't day but ton. You're going to look for these. <clears throat> okay. Um, the first, um, item is hey, e, hey, e, a doll, doll, oh. ha. Um. <clears throat> The next one is a goop cushion. A goop cushion. <clears throat> then the next item is don't goop. Don't goop. So don't goop. Don't goop. And the next item is a song, a song. And you might have heard this a lot. Gome, gome, or gome. Ahim ba, ahim ba. Do you want me to say them in uh, English or just show them? Da. Da. And I don't have any of these, but I got a bag of this. Angui. Angui. Let's see. Alaba. Alaba. And the last one is Hangokya. Hangokya. Can you say that for me? Uh, um, Dobbing. I don't know if I'm saying that correct, correctly. Oh, are you on mute? Hangokya. Oh. Okay, so the we're going to do one practice round of this game. And if you look at all these items, think about where they might be in your house. So think about where you might find your hang e, a goop go shan, don goop, a san, go me. Okay, da, on gui, a la ba. Hancock, yeah. Okay. So we're gonna do a practice round. So what you got what what you're gonna see on the next slide is you're going to see what you're gonna see on all the following slides, but this middle word gome. Okay, that's gonna change every time we switch slides. Uh you're going going to go and look for the gome. So gome bat doma is what we'll say. Gome bat doma. And whenever we say that, you go and look it, but you have to come back, unmute yourself, and say get ton, get ton, and say I found it. But show your show your gome. All right. Is that the gome? Hold on. I'm messing with the <clears throat> And let's see. Ah, uh, coke. Gome, but no more. Get tong. Get tong. Anyone else find it? This is audience participation. Yeah, you go. He's he's looking. Okay. okay. So Antali is looking. 
Ah. I can't see. Okay. You'll have to remember to unmute yourself. Get tong is what you say when you find it. Get tong. May but don't ma. Get tong. Don't tell it. Get tong. Would this count? Go me. Top home all. Sonne. <laughs> so when you come when you come to the screen, they need to say get ton, right? Ha. I can't find it. Get Go me. Get ton. You say get ton. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get ton. Get ton. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, next slide. Oh, let's see. Ha, okay. but ton. Okay, ha, if you found ha. this, go me. Bad. Oh, me. but ton, you found it. I can't see the screen. If you, if someone can help me see who, see who's found it or comes. Did somebody in. say get ton? Ha. Oh. Okay. Uh, I think it was Melanie's. Ah, oh. ton tali. Ha, but ton. Go me. Awesome. Oh, so hot. <laughs> so hot, so Tali. Oh, um, cool. Okay, we're, so we're going to get started for real. That's the practice. That's how, did anybody else find it? Nope. <laughs> that wants to chime in? Okay. Oh, uh, cool. All right, get ready. Get ready. Don't goop, but don't ma. Don't goop, but don't ma. Don't goop. Remember what you got to say when you come back. When you come back, you got to say get ton. Don't tell me, get ton. You found it. Say, I found it. Get ton. Ah, so ha, ha, so ha. Ah, ya ta. Ya ta. Okay. Ya ta, say it. I'll let you say it to them. Ya ta. Yeah. Can you say ya ta? Say it. Ya ta. So ha. Okay, next slide. Look. Ha. Ha, but ton. Yes, you found it. Don't go. So. Ha, oh, oh, don't go. So weird. <laughs> okay. So ha. Okay. Hank, okay. But don't ma. Hank, okay, but don't ma. That's the no. What's that? Hank, okay, but don't ma. What do I look for? That? I don't know. Hank, Hank. Do you remember the slide? Do you remember? No. Okay, go get some. Oh, yeah, it's that, but. Hank, oh, yeah, but don't ma. When you come back, don't forget to say get ton. Get ton. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hank, oh, yeah, but don't ma. Here's one. Mine's here. It's already out. Hang on, yeah. But don't, ma. Hang on, yeah. But don't, ma. That one? Is it similar? Yeah, Tom. Get ton. Say get ton. Get ton. 
So cute. Okay, what is it? A candy, a brownie Christmas tree. Oh, let's try again. Hank Ogya Batoma. What is it? I don't know. We have some. I don't know that we have any. Don't. I have some at home. Uh -uh. But they're gelled. Oh, candy? Sorry. Why the candies? Oh, I see. You want to show them what it is? Honey. Honey. I was talking to Nora. <laughs> Anybody have it? Anybody? It doesn't have to be just kids. <laughs> huh? I said it doesn't have to be just kids. I don't remember what it is. We don't have a bag, but we got. There you go. There you go. Okay. Okay, next slide. Hello. So we need to click the slide. Huh. Okay. Ha, but Han. Ha, but Han. So, ha, Hank, look, yeah. Wait, here's a toy. Yes, but do you have a sack? No. Sack to put it in? No. You will sack. You don't have any over there. No. I don't have any over there. Okay, next slide. <laughs> Ala ba ba doma. Ala ba ba doma. Yeah. Oh. Yay! Remember to say getong. 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 Ha. So ha. Ha. So ha. So ha. Good for you. It's fruit. Mm -hmm. I love that. Oh, but on. I love that. Oh, it's so hard. You found it. So oh, hard. Did you ever pick on that one? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next slide. Hey, but don't ma. Hey, but don't ma. <clears throat> oh, careful. Okay. Okay. So hot. Your tongue. That's hot. So hot. So hot. Yeah. Oh. You can go get it. Go get one. No. If you know what it is. I know what it is. Hey. Go get it. When you come back, say get Tom. Any but the one more. Let's say get. Sontali get the home. I don't know how to say that. Sontali, what's your name? That's what Grandpa gave you. Sontali. That was his name. Yeah, Tom. You got to show it. Take your tongue and show it. Ah, so ha. Ha, so ha. Oh, so ha. <laughs> yay, yay. Good job. Doll. Yeah, he kind of, boy, that's a doll. That's good. That's that your doll. <laughs> so ha. Okay, next slide. E song. Remember what E song is? A song. A song. A song. A song. A Isan Batoma. What is it? Isan Batoma. What is it? Isan. A book? 
Christmas? No, we, we did that. You got Tom. Oh. He knows what that is. <laughs> say it. Say it and show it. Put it on the screen. Ha. Ha. So ha. Ha. So la. Day on day. Okay. Next slide. A son. Ha ba tan. A son. So ha. Next slide. Good job, everyone. Thank you for playing. Is that the end? That's the end. So this is oh, it. Oh, that was fun. That's, that's it. That's the end. Good job. I love the Christmas tree. I want you to put this up. Oh, oh, Probably eat this. Yep. Oh, you can eat it. So, oh my God. okay. This, I don't know. Melody, there. Um, so, this next one that Melody is sharing, um, this presentation today on Zoom is brought to you from the um, Kiowa language department through the Native uh, Voices Rising grant. And um, we're doing this one a Zoom outreach um, in the winter, and then we'll do one youth in-person outreach, probably at the tribe. And we'll have games and things like that for young, the youth to do. And uh, we have uh, people that are teaching classes. So you got to hear three of the teachers and their classes. And um, and then Courtney is, she teaches a native history class, a native studies class. And um, and then I help facil or I facilitate um, a class in Norman. And our elders that are helping us are these um, elders right here. So, Melody, if you'd like to share this, or I can. Okay. Um, so, Ramon, would you tell a little bit, little bit about um, Mr. Raymond Honkimai? How he's your elder? Oh, um. So <clears throat> we actually. Uh, got to meet a little bit beforehand. Uh, um, let's see, before uh, NVR, but <clears throat> see, I'm trying to think. I'm, I apologize. Um, so we had invited him to uh, come to the program, or that's right, Grandma Dorothy had brought him to the office one time. I do remember that. And um, it was wonderful getting to talk to him and got to find out that he also um, played um, on the Wild Bunch, the hand game team uh, with one of my grandpas, um, which was neat. So, but his name is Yaipohe, warrior. And he did serve in the, um, in the United States forces. Um, I believe the Navy, but I'm I'm not entirely positive. Um, so he grew up around the Saddle Mountain area. That is his um, folks. His mother was Henrietta Tonkime. Um, <clears throat> and unfortunately, he's not able to, to be here tonight. Um, he did have some things come up, 
Um, but we'd hope in the future to get a thing going where we can show a video about him talking about uh, his memories at Saddle Mountain uh, during Christmas time. I hope. Can we go to the next slide? Do we have the next slide? Who our next person is? Um, I think our next person is, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Let me go look, I have it on mine. Okay, PowerPoint. So the next person that we have up is Dot Saigya on Agyama. No, I do. Ha. So I got tongue up. I got tongue up. Go, but I do it on bad boy day. I'm saying I've been with y'all longer than anybody, and you guys forget, Ramon. I've been with these programs for twenty years. And a lot of it has been volunteer. I was with the speech program at its inception. And I was the only volunteer for the last, until Dr. Satok came on about four years ago. For many years, I was one of the only judges there. And I enjoyed it thoroughly. And that's just to tell you how much I enjoy talking Kiowa because it was my first language. My folks, my mother and dad, in those days, they called it, I guess you weren't educated if you didn't talk Kiowa. And my mother and dad did not speak a word of English. And I was born in a teepee at Hall Creek by two trees in front of the old church. My folks were camped there for Christmas. And it went on because there was a snowstorm. And I was born right there in the teepee with a fire going right in the middle. And I did not learn how to speak Kiowa English until I was six or seven years old. And I learned it from the nuns at St. Patrick's. And then ever, as I was growing up, my growing up years were around Ridstone, So Goodle, and St. Theo, or Ware's Chapel, Ware's Church. And every time I approached any of the places, I felt like people were so friendly, even when I was I was a little girl. Because in my era, I was born in 1933. My my oldest my oldest sister was born in 1894. That was Martha Doito, Martha Whitehorse. The other one was Mary Whitehorse. That is uh they, those were my older sisters. They were born in the 1890s. I was born in 1933. I was the youngest one of 13 children. I, I knew there was a lady in here, Melanie Pont. Uh, I talked to all coyote like she was my own aunt. It was one of the most gracious ladies I ever had contact with of a little girl. In those days, Kaiwas had so much gracefulness. The women shared with you. They never said, go on. If, I, if we were approaching Redstone or Hog Creek on a wagon, there was always welcoming. People were always camped someplace around. The women were nice and refined. And I learned my... I uh, I went from St. Patrick's to Riverside Indian School, off and on different different times, and I was treated finely at both schools. I have fond memories of both places, and I I just interacted among uh, two Methodist churches, and one I'm a Roman Catholic, and I love it. I love being Kiowa. I love my language. I've never been ashamed. I've gotten teased about it through my lifetime, 
by my own peers because I had a name that was Indian. It was White Horse. They grabbed my shoes and say White Horse and stuff like that. I never dyed my hair to try to be a redhead when we were teenagers and people were doing that because I liked myself. And I loved my sisters and my family and the neighborhood I came from. Gracious Kiowa women. Gracious upbringing from the kindness from the both churches. And I knew who was what. I remember when they were born. I know where most of you came from. I know your families. And that wasn't nosiness, it's interest. And I loved my life. And I still do. And I'm about to reach the end of my rope, but I'm still hanging on tenaciously to help anywhere I can, how I can, because I am a fluent speaker. And sometimes the Kiowa gets mixed up into, it gets mixed up into old Kiowa. And I have a tendency to say some old Kiowa words that nobody knows. I heard one word this evening. Doku Kelly. Nobody to me has ever clarified the word ku. All it means is like they invited us to eat and so forth, but they've never explained that to me. I come up on names, I remember names. Because of the graciousness of the older generation, I'm rich in memories because I was treated like an equal, even with the elders then. They were interested in what you done. And I've always enjoyed Miss Pamp. It's the first time I've seen you, but the city of Amarillo honored her grandmother, all coity in 1955 as me. I was survivor of Peladuro when we were brought to our knees in the wrinkle hand chase. And that's when we had to give up all of our warlike ways. But I've lived that over and over by book and mouth to mouth stories from my elders. And I'm just thankful for the life I've had. I'm thankful for all of the children I had. I had eight of them. God blessed me with eight. And my memories are sitting at Ware's Chapel or over at uh, Ridstone, and Santa Claus was always so darn late, and you couldn't wait for them to quit preaching so you could get your presents. <laughs> and like Isabel Tuhatchet described it, the presents were just tied to the big cedar tree that reached to the ceiling. And all of the ornaments were homemade with construction paper and crepe paper and Everything looked so festive with all the camps outside with the fireplaces going and everybody telling you to come over and eat. And it's just happiness all around. And finally, with the preaching, you went to sleep about midnight and Santa Claus would finally get to his gifts about one or two o'clock. And by that time, we were all nearly passed out from being tired. But it was such a joy to visit both places. I can go on those roads and have such fine memories. And I wish some more of the songs could have been recorded, but it's our loss by not, not doing this at an earlier time. It isn't your loss, it's our generation's fault that we missed a whole, the middle life that could have been so joyful now with our memories, but we didn't have access to cameras. We have very few pictures from that era because we just had the little box cameras. We had some of the finest bead workers, some of the finest artists. We produced so many artistic people. Everything had a name. Everything had a name, everything, the weather, even the cedar has a song. We're so, we Kiwas, and I'll keep on saying it because I know I'm right. We're still hanging on to six of our organizations. 
that we had when I was a child. What other race of people can say that? And we had the songs pertaining to each one. And most of all, we hold on to our belief in God. And I have memories of every one of you. You all come from fine people. And I appreciate working with all of you. Fine family, good roots. And I have memories of all of the nine tribes west of I-35. And I'll continue to do that as long as God likes me. I enjoyed I enjoyed all of my time teaching, and I will hang on as long as I have a voice. Aho hande onde han koigu ba oma. Agai te bato a kon, kon, kon ma do. Aho de bato. Oba ho. Oh, aho. Yep, love you. All right. And next, we'll pass this over to no, you. No, she's Miss Velma's there. She's here. Oh, cool. All right. So, ah, oh, I got the tie. Ah, cool. Oh, uh, oh. <clears throat> Velma Ruth Dumbo Eisenberger, I call. Ah, oh, I got the tie. Ah, go, I call. Ah, hongu go. Don't bot they go nido. Um stecker gea Um I'm gonna uh share some memories from um the Little Red Church. Uh in the early sixties, my grandfather um well I was raised by my grandparents, uh, John Aboa and Hattie Silverhorn Aboa. And my grandpa was my grandfather was the preacher at Little Red Church and um just a few of the, uh, I'd like to share a few of the, of the memories there. And um, uh, we, I think like most of the other churches, we, uh, uh, our members camped. They set up camp just around the church. <coughs> and um, we had a, a real strong youth group. And our youth group would uh, put on uh, the program and of course, sing the uh, Christmas carols. And um, well, at this time, it's in the 60s. So it's uh, um, not as, I mean, different from, uh, not much different, but a little different from uh, uh, Redstone. And then, uh, of course, they would uh, have the, the treat bags for everyone. And um, and uh, they just, I like, uh, Courtney was saying, they raise money through the year. They money. And one of the things that uh, I remember that I really, really enjoyed and I think was really neat, which something we people might try again is uh, having the box suppers where um, the ladies would uh, make a box and put uh, food in there, you know, and then um, then uh, people would bid on it and then pay for the box and then they share that food. But the uh, old box suppers were really, really neat. And um, so uh, uh, we did go uh, Christmas caroling. There, well, it's kind of out in the country, so there weren't many houses we went to, but just a, a few houses. But uh, and then, of course, all of that was um, the singing and um, was um, well, the church. The singing was in Kiowa, but of course, the 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 Christmas songs were were in English. And uh, but it was it was uh, really. Really, everyone really enjoyed it, you know, camping out and visiting and uh, then having church and then the, the service. And um, of course, uh, we, we ate good. The food was really good. And uh, just a lot of uh, real, I have so many wonderful uh, memories of, of the, the, the families around there at the Little Red Church. And that's just been a, a, a precious memory in my heart and most of those people that were there, the elders, most of them, I think all of them are gone. Um, the people that, the, the members, and um, it's just really, really nice to to think back about what the what a wonderful time we had. Okay, Obaha, aho. Hande msaito. Hande. Was the church actually red? Yeah. 
It was? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I wanted to know. I hope. Uh ho. All right. Uh next. Uh he hope Gemma. Uh co. Well, my memories are from Rainy Mountain and all the other Kiowa churches all celebrated Christmas the same way. And the service and the gifts were in, and were given on Christmas Day, not Christmas Eve. Maybe other churches, but I know Hobart, Saddle Mountain, the Baptist churches, the area, they had their Christmas service on Christmas Day. And uh, they all, they had their camps and it was all the same. They all enjoyed the fellowship because I think they love to get together because they that's the way they live. Some of the people there, you know, the Kiowas were uh, always moving, but they lived together in bands. And so I think this, the theme of our, of our program is something about our uh, son. So we go back to the, their uh, memories that they had and in the, uh, in the memories that we listened to, there were three important things to them. I mean, se several, but anyway, uh, Christmas, Kiowa style, is celebrated on Christmas Day. And as some talk, uh, Dorothy and I think Velma mentioned, it goes on past midnight. So we celebrate December 26th, too, I guess. But anyway, that that's Kiowa, that's what Kiowa Church is did and uh i i, I uh, have memories of the the camps around the fellowship and some of the memories that they mentioned was there would be a camp crier going around to the camps telling what was going to take place telling the women to get up it's time to make your coffee and that everyone visited with one another but the unique thing about that was made it totally Kiowa was that the the services and the that they had it began with a, a church service, a Christmas service, all in Kiowa, and that was the spiritual part. And it went on and on. Every, people would get up and give their testimony, and then that and they brought their gifts. Of if they had money or pledge, if they didn't have it, then they pledged money for the next year's celebration. Those of them who had cattle pledged cattle, cows, so that they would the camps would have something to eat. And there's a picture there where you see the teepees. That was uh in uh, it says November in 1907, but you can imagine that that's the way they camped in 1893 there was not a church but there was a house somewhere and that's where they camped but uh they would give their give their gifts to the church to to the lord that was their offering and it was their testimony and then they gave made pledges of money or cattle or anything that the the camp next the following year could <laughs> And then the tree, the tree was a a very. Uh, they mentioned it. The tree, the cedar tree, <clears throat> the all oh, he meant a lot to them. I remember as a little girl, uh, the testimonies I hear. They would first speak of the of the tree because when you stepped in the church and there was a real live tree, you could uh, well, yeah cedar and always spoke of the cedar tree the the elders that they were glad to, they saw another year with the tree and then they would go on with their testimony and that and then uh, one thing that after they got through 
with their <coughs> service, their church service, then Santa Claus would come in. I don't know when Santa came into the picture, but I, but the in one of the accounts by the missionary, uh, it was in 1923, and this was a missionary, Dr. Bruce King from the Baptist offices in the East, and he wrote an account of his Christmas at Rainy Mountain, and and he quoted a bit uh, quotable as saying he was the first played the part of Santa, the first Santa. Well, this was in 1923. He was old man then, so I don't know when it was. But anyway, in the past, I've heard people, elders well, talk Santa and how much fun he was. He spoke Kiowa, of course, and he was, <laughs> he was very, a very humorous person, usually, who played that part. He spoke Kiowa, and he would tell, uh, and they would. And so they forgot, they, uh, they, I don't know what the missionary thought of it, but this is the way the car was celebrated. They brought Santa came, Santa came to church, of course, and gave out his gifts. And then they had their treat bags. And so, and it's always Christmas night. And it's, uh, just like Belma said, those are precious memories. You can see the there to see the camps and smell the smoke and so you see their meat hanging out to dry and fellowship going around and seeing your relatives and and you heard Kiowa. Oh, if we could have heard Kiowa, if we could hear Kiowa like I, uh, those of my generation heard, then we would still be speaking Kiowa. Yeah, it was nice. It was, it was a wonderful time. Nice. <clears throat> and and so, uh, do you, uh, I'm glad to see all of you here to hear about, this is your history also, not just all the other histories that preceded this time, but this is a way that I was chose to fellowship and celebrate a very important day. And so today, this still goes on in some of the churches on Christmas Day. So I invite you to come to Rainy Mountain where there will be a real live tree. There have been a real live tree in the sanctuary ever since the first Christmas. And so you're very welcome to come there and uh, if you've never seen a Christmas. And the, the part that has changed that I miss are the elders and their testimonies of how how the Lord has watched them through the years. And so and they were grateful and glad to give their gifts of whatever it was that preceded all the fun part that came when Santa came. Of, and like I said, Santa could speak Kiowa. <laughs> I don't know where I don't know where, but Kiowa speaking Santa today. But it's been a privilege to tell you about a very important part of our Kiowa history, and to invite you. And I'm glad to hear you sing the Christmas song. And I'm looking forward to next year, where even more young people will learn the song. And that would be a very, it would be answer to prayer of the the tribal culture program that was in the late 70s. And there, and invariably, you'll hear somewhere in there that they're, they're there to participate in that program so that the Kiowa language would continue. And I'm sure that they would. Their prayers have been answered because you hear the young, you heard the young people singing in, in Kiowa, which uh, you didn't hear when they were here. Uh, well, they, that's what they wanted, and that's why they devoted their time to help uh, preserve our our ways, to put down on, record our ways. And what so I'm thankful for what did for you do? And, and so... Uh, it just, it's just the answer to their prayers to hear 
there's young people singing. And so I'm very grateful for this time of the year and for each of you who are participating. Aho. Obaho. Uh-huh. One, uh-huh. one, little, one little note. And when I first heard Kiowa words to English tunes, I thought we're colonizing. We uh, There's one church song that the Lord says, uh, Father composed that has a Kiowa tune and Kiowa words. That's a genuine Kiowa song about the angels coming to greet the Lord when he was uh, when he was born. Ton son, dog e ton son, na akoi ya koi do bongya. They sang Kiowa with a Kiowa tune, and it had the same words. It's a beautiful Kiowa song. Make it a point to try to find it and hear it. It's got Kiowa tune to it. Yes. Uh, I like to add a note. A Godobo composed the first Odebohon was the Kiowa pronunciation. Pron- uh, composed the first in no, this is not that, that. and then my father, that's his grandfather, and he gave him his name. So my father name was Ode Bohon, just as his grandfather, the original Ode Bohon. And it's got a Kiowa, it's got a Kiowa tune. That's what I mean. It's a Christmas song. Oh, yeah. I love that. I agree. I think, I think that's important to uh, listen to that and learn that Louis Toibo song because um, these uh, Christian hymns that are, I mean, they're not, they are non-Indian ones. They're okay, like some at night, whatever, but it just always seemed that our elder Kiwas, they sang and created Christian Kiowa songs, and so those are important to sing, and this one that you're talking about that uh, Louis composed, I think it's important to learn that because that is what uh, I think that our people would uh, want to hear, because that's an actual, you know, Christ, uh, it's a Kiowa Indian Christian song. Yeah, and right. he tells, he sings it and greets it his way with, you know, explaining. But that's my opinion. Because Joy to the World are old Dokoi song. Yeah, they're Dokoi. We eat these kind of songs. Or Geet I Dog song. Dog, get yeah, dog. Oh. There's the people. He was originally from around our our Dolores' dad. Toybos. Yeah. He was around Louis Toybos. He was such a gentle man. Nice. He was my dad's best friend. Yeah. I'm surprised people, you know, haven't been singing that song, his song. Hundy, yes, Hundy. I own time. Um, Melody? Go get dog, Emma. If I may add something, uh, this is a Kima, by the way. <laughs> uh, I wanted to add um, for those of you that may not know 
my father, his name was Milton Bubba Noel. And he was uh, and he was one of the Kiowa hymn singers that we had when he was living. And he was a singer in our Rainy Mountain congregation. This is where I was raised in our Rainy Mountain church. And uh, he sung alongside and learned from his uncle, who he called dad, uh, my grandpa Fred Soodle. And so they sung together um, many, many years, learned together and, and made it um, their goals together to do as much as they could to retain and to sing our Kiowa hymns, uh, Goy Dog Yet Dog Yet. And um, we had sung this song that, that we're talking about here, this what we're calling our Rainy Mountain congregation, many of us call the, the Kiowa Nativity Hymn by Brother Louis Toibo and my, my uh, big brother Louis. And um, we had sung it uh, at Christmas as far back as I can remember hearing it, but it was pretty rare, you know, and mostly elders sang it only. And then, you know, like others have said tonight, the elders sort of just started to, to, to leave, pass away, you know. And so the song uh, was sung only at Christmas when my father was living. And then when Grandpa Fred passed away, you know, fewer and fewer were singing it. So my dad was singing it at Christmas. And uh, when Grandpa Fred passed away in 2006, my dad was singing it. And then he taught my my brother that we just we just buried, you know, some say it's impolite to speak of those that gone on, but it, I have to talk about him, um, Freddie Kozad. And Freddie learned that song uh, as well. And so I remember learning that song when I was about 11 and I'm 43 now. And it was so difficult. Not a lot of people could, could really catch it. And so when Grandpa Fred passed away in 2006, my dad picked it up and he carried it on as best as he could. Then when he passed away in 2011, it just kind of, just kind of, you know, it, it went to, it, it kind of stopped being sung for a little bit. It seemed like just at Christmas, maybe. Then Freddie asked, he asked me, he said, I, I need to, I need to be able to start that. And he, he kind of had a, a, a hang, hang of it, but not too confidently. So we sung it together often when my dad, after my dad passed away, if Freddie learned it, he picked it up and he got it. Watch her, please. And so when my dad passed in 2011, a couple of years later, uh, I was mustering up the strength to start coming around our Kiowa classes and Kiowa, help them please, Kiowa uh, doings that we have. And the Kiowa Clementi class was being held. So this was a couple of years after 2011 and it was, it was November. And uh, so I got that, I dug up that recording of my father singing that song, the nativity hymn, and I found it in his things. And I took it down to the Kiowa Clementi class. And it was Thanksgiving. It was right after, right around Thanksgiving, uh, probably around 20, maybe 2014 actually or so thereabouts and I took it down there and I played it and I remember I played it for for grandma Dorothy who was there and Martha Addison and uh Dr. Rachel um the uh the facilitator and Cricket was there and um maybe one other person and I played it and I remember grandma Dorothy she was brought to tears 
because she said it was a, a beautiful song that she hadn't heard in so long. And I played it. And of course, that was the first time I had played my father singing that song on a, his recording. He learned that song from Grandpa Fred Soodle. And Grandpa Fred Soodle learned that song directly from Brother Louis Toibo. And uh, that song was composed in 1970. It's my understanding. And so uh, after that is when I joined the Kiowa Language and Culture Revitalization Program. And it was uh, the director at that time wanted to have a Christmas hymns outreach. And so she did. And she hosted, she gathered the information and she told myself and and uh, Freddie Kozad, my late brother, she said, you guys get your Christmas hymns together from your church and we'll bring in um, Joe Fish, uh, Dewpoint, and we'll, we'll host and we'll have a Christmas songs, Kiowa hymn. And uh, we did. And it seemed like from there, it, it took off our, our this nativity hymn. And that is just like Grandma Dolores said a while ago, that was the prayer of our our elders in her generation. That was the prayer of, of Grandpa Fred and Brother Louie, but that also was the prayer of my father, which is why he recorded it and sang it 24 times through so that others can learn it. And so I yep. played it. And I believe if, if you listen to it, I think it might be on the Google Drive I'm not, I can't remember who's, but my father is the one singing Silent Night. He's one of, I think that's the recording that's on there is my father singing Silent Night. And it may be, but I have the original copy that I shared with that Clementi class way back then. And so anyway, that was his prayer, my father, that this, what we're doing now would, would happen. And so this is a blessing to our Kiowa people. And it was left by Brother Louis Toibo. And so I'm so thankful that different ones have, have learned it and singing it and hearing it and reading it. Today, when we, we, we performed at the Kiowa Elder Center, um, one of my students, a young man, he read it in Kiowa. We're not quite there. The students are not quite ready to learn it yet, but they're reading it and they're they're talking about it and they're translating it and they're saying it in Kiowa. He read it for the elders and yeah. they were very happy. And so anyway, um, our Kiowa, our Rainy Mountain Kiowa um, congregation has been meeting weekly for the past three weeks to really buckle down and learn our Kiowa hymns and talk about them the, the way that, you know, when my brother Freddie was getting sick this is what we decided to do and so now that he's gone he's passed away uh our 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 men have stepped forward pretty confidently and they're learning these and george started this song uh the nativity hymn two weeks ago he's been starting it now in our congregation he started it sunday and i'm telling you it was so moving and it was so beautiful um but it's also sad because it has a lot of memories with it attached, I'm sure, for Grandma Dolores and uh, Aunt Carolyn and uh, Uncle Kenny, you know, and but also, you know, for myself, the way that it was passed down to in that recording from my father. And so I just kind of wanted to give a little history of that, um, yeah. sort of where it, it kind of came into into the light, I guess you could say. And um, I'm thankful clear back to that I mentioned that Kiowa language and culture revitalization program because when that director had that that uh that that idea and those that had that idea that were with her to host that Kiowa Christmas hymns outreach that's where it all kind of I feel like it came came out into the light that's, so thankful that's, to all of y'all for this I hope yeah thank you uh that's the year that the song went to the Smithsonian. They sang oh. it, Cedar Creek sang, Rainy Mountain sang, and I sang four stanzas of the Kiowa prayer song. I never did mention that, but I sing the prayer song before they start on those two. But it's at the Smithsonian in 
in keeping. Beautiful song. Pure oh. Kiowa. Oh, Ahu, Ikima for sharing. Um, so I wanted to share, um, I remember uh, uh, JT Goombay was also at that uh, Clemente class session and I was there. Um, and I remember sitting there uh, listening to your dad's recording with you and just, we I think we listened to the whole thing over and over and over and just trying to write it down and take notes. And then I remember we transcribed it within that Clemente class, like in the next few sessions, we went through and like transcribed it. Um, and it was just, it's just so amazing because like uh, our elders have mentioned that this song is a, uh, it's a Kiowa vert rendition of the Kiowa Christmas story that was told to the Kiowas by the missionaries. And so it's-, it's pure Kiowa. Oh, it's, and it's a Kiowa tune. So it's not a translation. It's just our interpretation of, you know, what what we heard from the missionaries. And it's it's an amazing song. Um, so I wanted to, um, I think we had planned for um, one of our um, teacher candidates to sing it or um, our credential teachers to sing it. But um, I think you had to jump off early. I do have a recording from a couple years ago that um, that my kids uh, yes. sang. So if you don't mind, I could play it. But also, Akima, I don't know if uh, if you or uh, George would be willing to also oh, sing. Yes. Um, Love to. <laughs> okay, so um, <laughs> I'll play this recording. Um, and this is uh, this is my kids doing their best to. Uh, to sing Thanks. it because this has Absolutely become a, a tradition Melody. in our house since that year, Julia, since uh 2014. Uh ah, I guess. It, so. <laughs> Play it. Play um it. all right, so let's see here. I'm gonna see if I can do this real quick and then I'll leave this up. Um well actually let me stop sharing so you can see the video. This is my favorite guy with them. And then I'll pass it over to Akima and George so they can share it. It'll probably be clear when y'all share it. So let me, okay. Tell me if you can see, whoops. Sorry, I pressed the wrong button. I gotta make sure I'm sharing sound. Okay. Tell me if you can see a YouTube video. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, go ahead. Uh, cool. Whoops. I gotta unmute it. Ah, okay. Hey, 
Oh, that was cute. Beautiful. <laughs> they tried. They tried. Bay, bay, bay. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, okay. Um, yes, I am going to, I'm getting my, uh, that was beautiful, by the way. I'm uh, getting of the kids singing that. Makes me happy. Um, I'm getting my, <laughs> my equipment ready um george is coming he's putting their our baby girl down and uh he's he's been listening all evening but he's just kind of been back and forth so uh he's coming to join us but um he's going to be here in just a second he's in the other room but what we're going to do is we're going to sing it two times through and then i'd i'd like to um play it for you as well of um two times through only of course of my father singing it uh as it was when i found it in his recordings of his his hymns um and so uh just waiting on george to get back here so um let's see uh Oh, I'd also think I'd heard maybe Grandma Dolores can speak on this also, but uh, that like you had said, Melody, it was a, a Christmas, it tells the, the Christmas story in Kiowa coming from the book of Luke. Yeah. And, um, you know, the verse that talks about that in the Bible. And so it tells that in Kiowa. Okay, here's George. Um. Okay. You get impatient with me when I say you're singing Kiowa words to an English tune. Okay, here he is. We're ready. Two. Nativity song? Yeah. Okay. Papa, hey, dog, a tad day, a god day, then on Bacaba, so saki on sun bone hill, Yabon on the hill, not down me for big soy gunta, Tante Tiger by Bado, Dog Yay on Pedo, keep on sun. Oh, oh, hey, don't get down. ยาวกินยาวกอบเอาเอ้ยตาเดเฮกาโคเดเดฮันบากอบาซอซากีฮันซอนบงเอยาบอนเดเฮนาตอนเดปอยเดซอยกูตาทาเตตายาบาดบา
my singing partner my boss mm -hmm. awesome that was beautiful guys uh -huh. yeah aho ikima aho george thank you thank you <laughs> all right awesome um let's see hey them i'll turn it over to you um, I think that that's the very end. So do we want to go back to see, I think Ms. Pula was going to have a talk. Oh, let me go back here. Okay. Uh, so good. Come on. Uh, cool. I have trouble unmuting myself. Okay. Um, uh, that is my Kiowa name and that word really means like yellow rock or yellow stone and it was given to me by my Aunt Juanita Randolph and she said she didn't mean for it to be like yellow stone as we know it but she was trying to devised the word for gold and the closest she could come to is what it looked like when you took, took it from the earth and I don't, I don't know how she came up with giving me that name but she also had something to do with my name uh, my given name um, Dolores can um, th think about this with me Dolores and I were both delivered by the uh, same doctor Dr. Hathaway, and Dr. Uh -huh. Hathaway had a, a nurse, and uh, I was born in Carnegie at home. I, we didn't go to a hospital or something. I was just, doctor came there, and uh, when they had to give me a name, uh, my aunt, Juanita, wanted to call me Joe Nell. I don't know where she got Joe Nell, Joe from, but uh, the nurse wanted to name me Martha. And they kind of went back and forth, and finally they put them both together, and that's how I got my first and middle name. So um, strange things come up. But um, most of my young life, um, I went to uh, what what we're calling now All Heap All Dog Ito, which was the Cedar Creek Church, and um, we went there every Sunday, and. Um, Back in my day, I think I don't think they were camping then because people would drive there from their homes wherever they were. Uh, people had cars then, so they could drive there. But what I remember was having our Christmas at home during the day. Uh, we'd have a Christmas dinner and then we'd exchange gifts and and then just kind of relax until it was time to go to church in the evening. <laughs> and um. Uh, I remember them taking some things with them, but never paid attention to how this was going to play out. And um, when we got there, it was just like regular church. You know, they have the minister would um, give the sermon and there would be a lot of um, Kiowa speaking and um, Kiowa songs. And um, there was hardly anything in English at that time. And since we spoke it at home, um, that's all you heard was Kiowa at home. You were just, you just were into everything. And uh, you know how it was back in the day when they were strict with you. Um, children were uh, seen and not heard. So um, sometimes I think that's not so good because when you want to ask questions, you want to ask things that were going on about the Kiowa language, 
uh, usually you were shoot out of there and you had to go play or be somewhere else. And not only did we lose, start losing our language then, but that didn't help either that you, you couldn't just go and be a question box to your family. You know, that just wasn't heard of. And, um, I think my, uh, family took things for us. Um, but what I remember was going into that big church and there was a huge cedar tree, natural cedar tree. And like I said, back in the day, they didn't have a lot of lights and things on it, but they decorated with um, a little garland. And um, I remember the tinsel, all the, all the tinsel on the trees. And the thing I remember about that tree more than anything was that it had a thousand handkerchiefs and socks hanging off of it. I do remember that. And later on, found out that those were handed out mostly to the men, but there were other gifts there too. A lot of dolls, I remember that. And um, <clears throat> well, well, by the time the night wore on, not only were they finished with the um, sermon, but they did their pledges and everything for the coming year. And that took a little bit of time. But like I said, all of that was Kai was spoken. And you knew what everybody was saying. And um, finally, you got so tired. And this is getting late at night. And you're just about to fall asleep. All the kids are starting to fall asleep. And then eventually, like Dorothy and uh, Dolores said, uh, you would hear this conglomeration from the outside of bells ringing and stuff like that. And people start, kids start waking up and start, knew that there was time for Santa Claus to come. And then when he came in there, there was all kind of a noise and talking and everything. And um, they start giving out their gifts and, um, I remember we got treat sacks and those were those were kind of a different thing because you didn't get those anywhere else. <laughs> I just thought they came from the churches and that was it. And uh, eventually, late into the night, you know, you, you went back home and uh, I don't know what we did the next day. I guess we slept in. I don't know. But that was kind of my memories of um, what happened at, at our church. Um, Years later, after I came back around here, um, I thought I was going to keep hearing Kiowa forever. And I went to the Kiowa complex, to the AOA, and I think we had a dinner there. And um, there was hardly anybody speaking Kiowa at all there. Very, very few, maybe one or two people would speak up. But, but otherwise, everything was in English. And it's more and more so that way today. Um, and I didn't join this group till a little before COVID, and that was just to volunteer my time and work with the Kiowa language candidates. And I want to tell them that you guys do real well. <laughs> I compare you with my students, and you do well. You you speak well, and some of you are even singers. That makes it better. And um, that's all I can remember about that, uh, about the church things. So um, with that, I'm going to stop and say Obaha. Aho. Aho. Awesome. Oh. Okay. Um, so I know it's a... Uh getting late but we wanted to see if there is anyone who wanted to share any uh of their christmas memories or if anyone has any questions for anyone on the call so just wanted to open it up to anyone uh with any questions or if you have a memory that you'd like to share as well I think uh, uh, Mr. Raymond was going to talk about, um, what church was he going to talk about? Saddle Mountain. Saddle Mountain. Is there anybody from there that would uh, that's on here that would like to talk about Saddle Mountain? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know my mother used to say Saddle Mountain. 
she would say Salem Mountain. It's Salem Mountain. Salem Mountain. Yeah. Tall coat. Okay. Anybody have any other stories they'd like to share? About their church memories, Miss Melanie? Do you have any stories? Uh, I don't really have any about my family. Uh, for as it as far as church is concerned, um, I do remember that my grandmother uh big aunt and, uh, brought down her parents from Anadarko down to Fort Worth where we were living at the time for Christmas and uh, it was very interesting uh Maggie sang a song and at, I had no idea what she was saying uh and uh very joyful both she and Enoch were very joyful, happy people, loved kids. And so having them there for Christmas was very special because that was the only time I did get to spend Christmas with them. And uh, they were just joyful with the season and uh, more so than most people I'd ever seen. And it was, it's a wonderful memory. Oh. I wanted Ms. to Dale? share. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, just before my internet might go out, but um, Grandpa Silverhorn James, uh, he didn't. He had us all over there. He had sixty-two grandchildren, and he knew us all. He knew every one of us, and uh, you know, coming from St. Louis, you know, and from a uh, Italian community that, you know, celebrates Christmas like crazy. And then to go down to Oklahoma, I really had to, you know, learn um, really what Christmas was about because it wasn't really about what you gave. It was, you know, it was, he was giving from his heart and it was just fruit. And that was, you know, he had crates of fruit for all of us. And, you know, he made sure that everybody had an orange and apple and some uh, candy and some nuts. But just the memory of him sitting there in this front room there and, uh, yeah, just excited to see him and, you know, and, and, being, and receiving that was just the biggest to me, you know. So it was always a special time of the year. And that's, you know, one of the times we would make our way down there is about this time to spend with everybody, so. Oh, oh, Bob. Uh -huh. oh. Miss Gale or Miss Marion? Or Rusty? <clears throat> Oh, they own a bus all the way from Farmington, New Mexico. Oh, and, huh. then, and then my it's good to hear my Atan Keys, uh, Dorothy and uh, uh, Dolores and my Thais. Um, <clears throat> my fond memories is different from regular, you know. But they what they call white man church talk. <laughs> but you know, my earliest fond memories way back, oh, I'm gonna say in the early early sixties. Um, my mom, Velma, I hate him. Close that. Um, her dad and uh and his eye, his good friend, um, um the callous face, they they started that little red church. And they really were Pentecostal. And I, I, I remember way back there during Christmas time <clears throat> that uh, I remember 
my my grand my cone thing, Harry, I hate him. And um <clears throat> you know, all my grand grandpa's Car Carlisle, Carlisle, they 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 had a big drum they they brought in there and they would sing all these Kiowa hymns to the big drum. That's my earliest fond memory of going to church at Little Red Church. Mm. And uh, that was something to see. I, I, I That was probably the only church that I've known, uh, young as, as I was, and my brothers, you know, my Bob Ewing, they, they used to, we used to go over there. And then, of course, you know, <clears throat> uh, as a Koyagu, we, we really celebrated our Christmas time was uh, in a Native American church. And there's a lot of, lot of memories there. A lot of beautiful songs sung, talking about dog, hey, dog, he got come dog, he, oh. how he became, he walked on the song, talking about he walked on the water. All of these uh, songs are talking about dog, he, you know, um, sitting there watching all my, say, yeah, my, uh, God, I, there's so many. I, I, I would, it'll take you all day to tell you who I've seen growing up around that that sacred fire, and hearing their most intimate prayers, talking about the next generation and the next generation to come. Uh, you know that's something beautiful. Our Native American church and the songs that are sung there. And it was kind of my earliest fondest memories as a real young guy. Um, watch all my contes. They come in and they used to come early during the afternoon. And they used to sit and drink coffee with dad and talk to mom and visit a little bit. Then they go down to the church, uh, to the deep ground, and they fix it up in there and get ready. And there's a few times I remember my dad used to say, way back there when I used to have uh, these uh, Native American church services, they would they would have there would be folks used to come over and camp like two three days before, then they'll have then they'll have their Native American church service, and then they'll stick around two three days later, and then they'll break camp and they go on. Those are the kind of the earlier times where, like, my dad's uh, folks, his grandpa. He, um, my dad was raised by his his grandpa, Kiowa Charlie. He kept a hold And his uh, grandma, his grandma, Clay Coche, Apache. So, and also he was taught by his... Uh, is a op ear, you would say, and uh, that's about far as I can go back. And I can talk about my folks, and then, of course, my mom's side, and that's a very lengthy uh, relation there. They're all, there were all uh, believers in the Native American church, and a lot of prayers were said and done. Uh, way back there, and oh. I'm just kind of giving y'all a little bit of history of where I come from. My my folks, it's like on my mom's side, I hate it, Dogu And then on her her grandpa's side, you know, Lone Bear, Saint Pago. And through that, you know, of course, you know, uh, uh, his mother, Don Bedama, yeah, my Goki. And then her, her father, Toho. So, so th those are my folks where I come from on both sides of my family. But being Christmas, you know, we we often think about our folks where we come from. You got to establish that where you come from. That's one of the main things that were taught to us boys growing up in Hawk Creek, Carnegie, and Surreal. 
But in, during that time, there was a time we had to talk about Dok I, how the creation, how it became to be, what it is today. And sharing this Christmas time, you know, it's kind of a sentimental time for our family. You know, my, my dad and my mom, that was kind of their main thing to celebrate Christmas and Easter. That was have pilgrimage meetings back then. And, of course, you know, there's time we go to church, too, not Cedar Creek. You know, I got baptized at Cedar Creek when I was three years old. So that's kind of the farthest back I can remember going to Cedar Creek when we lived in Carnegie. And then we moved, then we moved to Surreal. And then um, then we finally settled there in Hawk Creek. And in a short time, we even lived in Indian City. And there was times we used to go to to uh, Grandpa Harry's place in Carnegie, south of Carnegie. So those are the kind of the little bit uh, history well, of, of what, I, what I've witnessed as a young man, young boy, young baby. And uh, I always remember all these old folks talk of Koi it, it, it just It's something that I would always thought that would always be here. I always thought my uncles, my grandpas, my big sisters, everybody would always be here. And, but I, what they told me, what they shared with me, I keep that in my pocket and I share it with my family, my little old family. And when a chance I get to go home, you know, I get to see my children. And we share a lot of these stories and talk about our old folks. Um, here's just something I just wanted to share with you all real quick. And then I want to say Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy New Year. And um, just wanted to say that much to you. Oh, Baha. Uh, oh. 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 Melody. Uh, Melody. Okay. I'd like to mention something really quick. Um, I wanted to make mention. I was talking with my mother. You know, my mother is uh, Gloria Topai Noel. And uh, she was, uh, she's from the Elk Creek region. I call it region, but she's from the Elk Creek areas where she was uh, born and raised. Uh, she's, she, of course, she's all Kiowa, but uh, we were talking about this, about our Christmas memories. And uh, something that she mentioned is something that I'd always heard growing up in, in Rainy Mountain. And I attended a uh, church in Hobart with her, uh, you know, some of the time as well, but mostly at Rainy Mountain, of course, is where I grew up. But uh, one of the things we were talking about was the similarities we heard from the elders there on both places about how wonderful the tree, the Christmas tree smelled in the church, churches. And um, my father used to say the same thing. He used to say his grandma, uh, my big sister, Maggie Quitone uh, Toybo, she used to say that too. The tree is the, the, the smell of the Christmas tree is the most wonderful thing she used to say. And so that's something that's kind of a memory for me that I wanted to share that, that they said. Um, but my mother, she, she uh, you know, her folks are, are from the uh, Hobart. Now it's called the Hobart First American uh, Church, I guess, I guess Baptist, but on, on Lincoln in Hobart. But it was originally the Elk Creek Indian Church. Um, and she remembers the Reverend Cheney she spoke of that, that was the, the preacher there. And growing up for her and, and being around that was her life. And so, you know, I wanted to make mention of them. I don't, I don't know if anybody has mentioned them tonight. Or, of course, I was, you know, in and out a little bit with being able to hear some of it. But uh, I don't know if anybody mentioned uh, Hobart First American uh, in our, our Christmas memories tonight, but I definitely want to uh, bring that bring that up and tell you all about that, too. And and, you know, just like Grandma Dolores said, our churches had, you know, Kiowa churches had at least the Baptist is what she said, I believe. And they're all similar in their uh, how they celebrated the Christmas in the churches. And so same thing with Hobart First American. Uh, formerly, like I said, the uh, Elk Creek, uh, Elk Creek Church. They also had that, you know, they had their Christmas Eve, they had their children's Christmas pageant, Christmas program on Christmas Eve night. 
And um, so both churches did that. I remember going back and forth some of the time trying to get to both of them. But um, and so they did that. And then the next day we came back again. And we had Christmas service in the in the nighttime on Christmas night and lasted clear until after midnight. And we would get home at sometimes at two in the morning the next day. So anyway, that's just something I wanted to share and, and, and mention the uh, Hobart First American, Omaha. Oh, I hope. Would anyone else like to share? Um, I'm here. Just a minute. Let me see if I can. We see ya. It's just Aww. it's Dan. My um my first memories of Christmas is both Rainy Mountain and Redstone. My my dad was from the Rainy Mountain Church and my mom was Redstone. And uh a lot of the people that you mentioned, like um uh I knew him by Slim Silverhorn. I I grew up knowing him by that and Jane, and um he is my mom's close relative. I think they were first cousins. And um so I remember him from being a little girl growing up. He's always quiet and he was always friendly and always spoke to me every time he saw me and um mostly it would be um he would we would be in town my mom would be in town and he would be there somewhere so i re remember him coming to dinners and things and at redstone um when i was there people camped on the outside but a lot of us my mom and um because my grandmas were were older grandma etty ma pope and uh uh, Grandma Myrtle Pottle T and Eva Salo and and um, Tonhal, um those are all my mother's um, aunts, my close relatives, and I call them Grandma. And I remember all of them, Kitty, uh, <clears throat> um, I I can't let's see, uh, can't I knew her as Kitty Ryan. I, I know she has, um, she's my uh, mother's um, aunt. She was married to my my mother's uncle. And they were older people. And when we had Christmas, the older women would give me Christmas presents and uh, they would have it tied up in a handkerchief. And I still have some of those handkerchiefs that they tied my presents up in. They weren't tied up in like... Um, Christmas wrapping paper, they tied the things up that they gave me in handkerchiefs. And it was really something special to me because they were so nice about everything. What Sometimes they gave me little trinkets or sometimes they gave me little bars of soap or, and candy and stuff, but they always had it tied up in a handkerchief. My, my redstone grandmas did. And at Rainy Mountain, I just remember being there with that the tree that everybody's talking about and there the whole church would be full and my first memories is of my my grandpa being in church my grandpa Toybo is when he prayed he knelt down he knelt he went he knelt on his knees and that is something that's really burned into my memory when I think of him I think of him like that he was i I didn't realize till later what a humble person he was and how he was so um, prayerful. And Marianne, um, I remember her grandpa and her mother, and um, we grew up at, at Redstone together, went to church a lot together every Sunday. So I remember them too. And Christmas was really great. Uh, we had our program, we had a program at, at redstone where we had uh the all of the kids did their christmas pageant or where it was at on christmas night and my aunt winifred little man 
was always the one who got all of our things, all of our little speeches that we gave together and had us going up there. And then my aunt, Leela, was our Sunday school teacher. Leela, my uncle Sticker's paddle his wife, my aunt. So my Sunday school teachers um, were at Rainy Mountain and at Redstone were um, were my aunts or my close relatives. And all the way up till I got to be in high school, I learned the gospel from them. And they were so nice. I can truthfully, honestly say that my aunts on my on my Toybo side and on my Paddlety side, I never heard a harsh word from any of them. My grandma scolded me a lot, but not my aunts. I, I've never, ever heard a harsh word from them. And they talked to Kiowa. They, they didn't talk to us in English. Uh, when we had Sunday school, yeah, they did in church. But other than that, um, being at Redstone, they, Redstone has a basement. And my grandma, Etty, would, they would bring her bed down there, Etty Mopo. And she would be on her bed. And then after we finished whatever, I don't remember the meals, but when we would finish that, we'd all go sit on her bed or sit by her bed and she'd tell us same day stories. And it was really, really a good time. Everybody was happy. Everybody was, it was just a lot of fun. It was really nice. And then it, when, when I got older, after some of the older women passed, older grandmas passed away, well, they stopped doing that. That They stopped at Redstone. They stopped. Not so much at Rainy Mountain, but they did at Redstone. They stopped going over there and being there for, seemed like the whole week before before Christmas. And the, the songs that they sang and, and um, the talks that they gave and, and the, um, the, their total devotion. They were very devout people. Glenn Stumbling Bear and Pearl Stumbling Bear and um, uh, the Doy Bice men and all of them. They were just all really devout people. And at Christmas time, it seemed like they really enjoyed being together. And it was a wonderful time to be around all of those older people. I really feel, I really feel now I tell my family about them. Um, because they were wonderful people. They were so nice and they were so loving and they had, there was never like harsh speaking to anybody and nobody uh, talked about anything other than um, kind things because it was bad manners to say anything bad to other people during that time or to, make any kind of off-color remarks. You just didn't hear that when we were little growing up. So the preachers, I don't remember them very well. I remember their names. I don't really remember a lot about them. Uh, but I do remember all of my relatives, my aunts and my uncles and my the older people that went to church at Redstone and went to church at Rainy Mountain. And I'm really thankful that I knew the older people like Goom Da and my grandpa Toybo and uh, old man Sato. I shouldn't have called him old man. Grandpa Sato and my grandma Alma Big Tree and her family. All of those people were were older, but I was fortunate enough to get to be able to, to see them and be around them. That's pretty much my memories of growing up at Rainy Mountain and Redstone, Omaha. Aho, Miss Gail. Oh, uh -huh. <clears throat> I liked hearing about the basement at Redstone. It was, it was really, <laughs> it was really fun. Is there anybody else that'd like to share? 
Um, we do have a, a English song translated into Kiowa that if anybody wants to try, we did this. Uh, we did a few songs at our Monday class. And um, I said I would share this. And what we would have to do is everybody would just mute themselves. And um, and then you can get back on afterwards, but we can practice singing it if we have, uh, unless there's anybody else that wants to share. Any more stories? Okay. <clears throat> Miss Melody, can you um, change the slide for the next one? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, this is, um, we can say these words all together. We'll say the first line or I think, Dane, did you do this with us? Dane, are you there? Oh, did he pop off? Okay. Darn. <laughs> he was going to have him lead it. Uh, yeah, he is, isn't it? No, I think Ramon's on. Ramon might have, Ramon maybe can lead it with us. Uh, so, ma on de ba doin de dom tai. Okay, can everybody say that? Ba oi doin ma on de ba doin de dom tai. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And then the next one, I can't highlight it. So, Akong Ba Ton San Hail. Ba Oi Toy. Akong Ba Ton San Hail. Ton San Hail. All right. And the next one, we can break it up in two. They beg ya dong ya. Ba Oi Toy. They Beg ya dong ya. Day beg ya dong ya. Okay. Day beg ya dong ya. Right. Bagi ma hol. Bagi ma hol. Okay. Then we can uh ga ga ma on de ba. Toy. Ma on de ba. Doing my own day, my own day, the ton son hail. Okay. You can say that last, so you can say, just say the last line, the mm -hmm. ton ton son hail. Okay, the ton son hail. All right, um, the oh, right, so uh, all right, um, Ramon, uh, good on Tali, since Dane popped off, would you be able to, um, start this song and everybody else can mute themselves. Otherwise we'll have too much feedback. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh -huh. uh, cool. <clears throat> Ma on the ba ton te dong tai kya kong ba ton san he they beg ya dong ya baggy moho. My own day batoin. My own day batoin. My own day, my own day dot on tan head. My own day batoin day don't tie. Air con baton tan head. They beg ya dong ya baggy moho. I'm on day batoin, my own day batoin, my own day, my own day dot on tan hail. My own day batoin, they don't tie. They're gone baton tan hail. They beg ya dong ya baggy moho. Come on, day batoin, my own day batoin, my own day, my own day, dot on tan hail. 
fun singing that it's just a tune that i know that everybody knows so um i wanted to uh everybody wanted to have a sing-along all right um and then the last thing that we have tonight if you want to switch to the next slide uh grandma dorothy are you able to get put your mic back on oh um hey uh cricket yeah. Um, Nanette just called in, uh, said, uh, Grandma Dorothy's, uh, I guess her computer, the battery died. Oh, no. <laughs> so she's rushing over to try to get her, uh, connected. I don't know if she'll be back in time. Mm. Um, I told her to message me when she gets there. Okay. All right. Um, maybe you could call her and put her on the speaker. Oh, put her okay. on speaker. Okay. okay. Hey, so, Leah, let me let me try. Hey, so, let me give her okay. a call. All right. So, huh? Hey, Well, we hope you, that you guys had a good time um, uh, joining in, fellowshipping, reminiscing. Um, and it was just something that we'd done out one outreach a quarter when we were doing a previous grant. And with this one, um, we just wanted to, you know, kind of keep that going and, but not do a whole bunch of outreach outreaches because when we're trying to learn from our mentors it takes a lot of time to plan these so um, but we're glad for you guys to get on and join us tonight um miss melody has uh or gom gom gedogima has um classes for the public on sundays from three to five i think every other sunday um so be sure to check those out and you can ask questions and everything there and um, share your thoughts and ideas and learn Kiowa. Let's see. Oh, hey, uh, I just uh, talked to Nanette. She is at her house. She's logging back into Zoom right now. So we should okay. see Grandma Dorothy here in just a minute. Um, but uh. Yeah, while we were waiting for a second, I just, um, since you mentioned that, uh, hey, Thema, let me stop sharing the slides really quick and I'll share um, this, uh, oh, let me press this. Uh, let me share my screen and share this uh, website. So if you just type in learnkiowa.org, um, there's, it's a website uh, where you can find all of our sessions that we record. And if you go over here to lessons in adult learning, if anyone wants to kind of get started in learning Kiowa, um, there's all kinds of information. And over here is all the lesson, lesson plans, videos, recordings. You just click this red learn Kiowa now button and there's even different resources on study stack and you can download these. So anyway, um, feel free to explore. I'll put the link in the chat. So, oh, I see Grandma Dorothy. So let me, let me bring her on. Uh -huh. Grandma Dorothy, are you there? Hi, Grandma. Hello. Yay. I can hear you. Okay. So, uh, grandma, we're, we're just at your part here. So let me pull the picture up here. Okay. Is somebody going to pray for me? 
or you want me to do it now? Uh, oh, our, our we're, we're ready, Grandma, for the closing prayer. Okay. Okay. Today, the people had enough mom. It went out all of a sudden. I hold dog. Okay. I hold it, but how? How you got tilt? How you got tongue tied? You got day and high get up, but him dog a dog. Day and high get up. How you cook dog? Do you got day and a tied up? Put it dog him dog. I'm the bull tied dog. I got get tired on. He got he got on con. Up your target, get happy to get town. Get a bit town. Go get combo. I shan't. But I hate to get. Get my name. The title in a target to be hide it. Go get down. Go to eight though. I get the bit boom. How you get all gal? Get so look like a combo a kill. I get the back kill. The tide of the dog, a good boy, the toad it. And I get her. They get on the dot. I get the go. I eat a good eat ton of Sunday. You got key to her. Mean back of her dog. Oh, yeah, they are tied or tied or in us. I get the hang on ya. Yet told ya. They don't tie ye. Go, I go back. I go back. Go to oil me. Go to the bottle dog. I go on the title. We're back to oil it. I'm better. Dog, I get. Huh, oh, my doctor, but I can't, oh, honey, oh, the goy can't. The title, the good I get the tape, the clay on the top. So, I need the outside. Yet, huh, but I go, but I may. They go to the bottle, dog, eh, a gun high, you know. How about how you cook, dog, oh, they go get town. They tie at the, but they hint of the Kahigo, but on Tanda, so low and tender. I hold it, but don't I eat confido, the dog's up to Obaho. Aho, Grandma Dorothy. Aho. Aho. Yes, I love y'all. Cope the in cope the dog. Yes. Yes, y'all. Have a have Merry Christmas. Hold on, talk away, but uh, Merry Christmas. Oh, we were saying snowman. Um, what was it? Uh, Oki. So old safe da Oki be ama. So let's if it's snowing, let's make a snowman. <laughs> <laughs> It's his Honda aim Honda aim Honda Honda aim side saw. Oh right. somebody. One of the elders, I guess, or somebody that may know. I had a student ask me today. Uh this is not really pertaining to Christmas. Um, but he had asked me, he said, I know he said the word for war bonnet, but he said, Do we have a separate word for the war bonnet that's long and drags down? I always heard them say, at ahoy, ye on pump. Oh. Tie it two times back. Oh. You know, it's a double train. At ye on pump. Okay. At, at ahoy, ye on pump. Okay, I got it. Aho. You are welcome. Word with pride. Yes. That was a good question my student had, though. I thought that was a really insightful question. <laughs> yeah. 
And Ipogakita. Ipogakita. It's Jesus' birthday. Oh, okay. Ipogakita. Yeah, it's a birthday. Or Tonsan. Dog at E. Tonsan, Hadel. And I always think he came with the beat of gourds and everything. Tonsan, Tong, or gourds. You know, Tonsan, Hadel. What does that, you know, if you go to a further explanation? Dog at E. Jesus. Dog E. Big dog. What powerful words. Prairies for y'all. Everybody have a Merry Christmas. You too. I and uh, my, my lights just went out while I go. The battery went out on this little deal. I So I put in the chat, if you scroll up a little bit, um, Uh, what we said last night was Honda owned a Hank Aki da da. Yes. So it's a wonderful uh, toy day, Chris, toy yeah. giving day. Hank. Hank Aki da da. I called my sister Anna Sue one time to say, How do you say uh, cedar tree? She called me back. She said, Hank, I said, that's a Christmas tree. A cedar tree is all he had. See, that's what I put when I when I when I said Hank Hank Would is that how you would say a uh, Christmas tree? Yeah. Hank uh, toys. Hank Otto. Yeah. That's why we described them tied on that cedar tree, everything. Mm -hmm. I remember all that. I remember actually getting upset with people because they prayed too long. I wanted them to hurry and give gifts. <laughs> so you knew who, even when you were growing up. Now, everybody's had that feeling. You knew in your life who prayed a long time. <laughs> and it right. come, Three and or four hours later? Yeah, <laughs> and it's easy because if you like to pray, you could just keep stretching it. Oh, um, they did too. <laughs> keep praising the Lord. Oh. <laughs> yeah, like you. Well, uh ho. Oh, uh, thank you guys. Thank you for our elders. So very, very, very much for getting on and. Uh, sharing this, sharing all your knowledge with us so we can continue to um, try to learn. Um, uh, uh, if you have any children or nieces or nephews or grandchildren or great-grandchildren, we're going to try to do some games and outreach in June. Um, maybe at Riverside or maybe at at um uh, at the complex so um just say know that around that time we'll be doing something like that to finish up this grant yeah so uh -huh. and we're and we're studying now when is it Jan june 20th or january i mean june january 20th is going to be our credentialing oh Okay, January 20th, that's a Saturday or the 21st? 20th. Okay, okay so so anybody that's interested in um, getting credentialed so they can teach Kiowa in a public school setting, you'd have level one, you have to get a portfolio with 10 lessons and you have to do some professional development. And you have to learn uh, level one, four different areas uh, and get uh, quizzed and graded on. Level two, um, there's some of us that are going to try for level two on that day. Um, so uh, just wanted to let y'all know that.
So, and and if you look in the chat, um, Gum put a different way of how to say Christmas Day in there. Yeah, that's just another way uh, to say like, hope your toy day is good. Y'all hang kakida but ag. But um, I also see another question for asking about if there's going to group be a group for the um language fair, the Oklahoma Native American Youth Language Fair. Um, so I know we have uh, Gutong Hitali um, with the uh, Kiowa Language uh, Department on um, here. So I don't know if um, you have an answer or if there's an email that they could reach out to. Um, but uh, if you, the Kiowa, if, um, let's see, for uh, the Zotai House, if you can put your email in the chat, just make sure um, I can follow up. I can forward you the email that the, um, the Oklahoma Native American Youth Language Fair organizers just sent out to everyone that's on their list. And I can forward it to you um, because you don't necessarily have to go through a program. You could enter... Um, children, grandchildren, um, you know, youth ages pre-K, you know, even younger if they can speak, um, up through senior in high school. And uh, so I can forward you that email that got sent out to everyone who's participated in the language fair before. And it's got like the list and all the information on the categories and how to register and all that. I know there's been a couple of years where I just registered um, my, my, you know, kids just as a parent. Um, and then there's other years that I registered as a teacher. And so this coming year, I'll be taking some of my high school students um, to the language fair. But uh, OK, cool. Uh -ho, I see your email. So I'll get that email sent out to you. And um, yeah, but also maybe reach out to the Kiowa Language Department uh, just in case there's uh, maybe additional opportunities there. All right. Well, aho de ha. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you for hanging on there with us and sharing all of your awesome stories and memories and songs. So this recording will be posted on YouTube. And if you put your email in the chat, we'll make sure to get you a link. Otherwise, I'm sure you can search it up on Google and it'll pop up for you. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one. So everyone. Aho to Courtney evening. and Melody so much for just putting everything together, getting it organized. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's good to see everyone and hear everyone. So until we talk to y'all again, until we see y'all again. Have a good night. Bye. And Velma, Merry Christmas. Love you. Aho, aho, same to you. Grandma Dorothy. Good night, honey. Merry Christmas. Everybody. On day, on day, Hank, I kid, I dog. Hank, I'm a boy, both dog. Oh. Oh.